I like to congratulate you all for committing yourself to this conference that we are having yearly. Africa Oil and Power has been and will continue to be a true friend to the people of South Sudan. We are very happy and excited that this year is even better than last year. We have mobilized a lot of companies that are interested in investing in the Republic of South Sudan, not only in the oil industry, but in different areas. There is no doubt in my mind at all that by investing in petroleum and power in South Sudan, the future will be brighter in this country, and for that effect, in Sudan as well. Incomes will rise, jobs will be created, and exports will increase, leading to great growth and development to match the immense wealth of natural resources of this country. I'm pleased to announce that the first cargo of South Sudan crude oil is now ready for shipment in Port Sudan. <clears throat> I want to one more time congratulate the people of South Sudan and the government of South Sudan. I'm here not only to talk about oil and gas, but also I'm coming here as an African country to support another African country. You have countries like South Sudan, you have countries like Equatorial Guinea, you have countries like Kenya and the rest that were depending of aid, depending of funding. But if that development of that resource happens, independent, like the Republic of Equatorial Guinea. That nobody comes to our country to tell us how to lead our country. We decide what to do with our money. We decide how to do our development. And we do believe that we have been doing a very good job. <laughs> this is the same example that I usually advise to a lot of our African countries. Because the future and the development of the country, it is in the hand of their people on their leaders, their ministers. These are the ones who have to lead and make sure that they follow the policy and actually take care of those investors who are investing in the country. With my friend Ezekiel, we will sign an agreement tomorrow, inshallah. That agreement will enable South Sudan to come into Sudan in terms of looking at all of our oil fields, all of our oil facilities, all of our refineries, for the young engineers from Sudan, uh, from South Sudan, to come in, learn, and enrich their experiment, ex uh, experience so they can come back and also apply that in, in South Sudan. With this invitation sent by my brother, Minister Ezekiel Lol, to attend this meeting, I hope seeing the sister republic of South Sudan working together with other APO member countries to fight against energy poverty and to use petroleum resources to promote the social economic development for Africa. The Republic of South Sudan, Transitional Government of National Unity, and the Minister of Petroleum will continue to invite investment in the petroleum sector. The government will continue to work tirelessly to create an enabling environment for business to thrive in the Republic of South Sudan the development of oil and gas sector will encourage economic diversification. The big issue we have to ask ourselves getting out of here, are we creating that enabling environment? Are we creating the circumstances necessary for people to feel confident, to say we're going to put our money, we're going to go out there, we are going to have not just capital, patient capital that would wait, would invest, and continue to do it. What are we doing? Those tough questions as we stand today, if we are not able, we're not willing to ask those tough questions, and we're not willing to really address them, then we are doing a disservice to this country and its oil industry. My friends, we have to ask those tough questions, and we have to be ready not just to answer them, but to also create a path and set a mindset and say, we will make this work. By 2022, Nile Petroleum Corporation will operate a block with our tender hand as South Sudanese. So that will be 100% owned by South Sudanese. 
The strategy to do this is in place. The management has put a team in place. And from next year, they will make sure that any requirement to operate uh, by 2022 will be put in place. And our training center, which is not far away from here, is specializing and it train a lot of South Sudanese from Nile Petroleum, from the JOCs. So the plan we have as management is to ensure that this training center is upgraded to an institute itself. So that what we say yesterday about research, about you know, other issues will be done by that institute itself. I was looking up a report on the World, World Bank. A lot of people talk about the GDP of the Republic of South Sudan entirely is dependent on oil. It is true. That oil, most of it comes from Dar Petroleum. One of the vision for Dar Petroleum is to be the premier petroleum operating company in Africa. Together, we can perform miracles. So now, of course, you know, in 2018, this is the very important time for GPO. We actually started with the two governments and the two ministries directive back in July. Basically, the directive is clear. GPO has to resume in 2018 this year. So with this, you know, there is another, our partners that I have to appreciate here today, which is 2B Opco. So without the 2B Opco also, we will not be achieving fresh oil. Another area is uncapping of production uh, from Block 5A. Uh, this uh, is very important for us in ESPOC uh, so that uh, our uh, production, the uncapped production, is, uh, is done uh, without any delay. Uh, I'm happy uh, the two leadership, the leadership, the two ministers uh, of the two countries, uh, Sudan and South Sudan, uh, agree that uh, 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 basically to uncap uh, production of uh, Block 5A at uh, 20,000 barrels uh, per day, with the uh, possibility of increasing it uh, up to uh, 40,000 barrels per day. So we shall also work uh, with uh, suitable vendors uh, for the statement of, uh, uh, of equipment and facilities in Block 5A field. South Sudan is very close to the heart of all of us in Petronas. Petronas was here to witness the birth of South Sudan. As mentioned by Honorable Minister Ezekiel yesterday, Petronas was here during the trying times. Petronas was here to witness the peace celebration. And we can promise you that Petronas will be here for many, many more years to come. Because Petronas and South Sudan is a family. We want to continue to build a stronger collaboration with the Ministry of Petroleum, our partners and service providers to help modernize the oil and gas industry in South Sudan and elevate it to greater heights. We firmly believe that the peaceful South Sudan will attract more foreign investors for booming its economy and benefiting all South Sudanese people. As a strategic partner of South Sudan, please allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of CNPC to thank you, Government of South Sudan, for granting CNPC and partners the IPSA expansion. That represents the high trust and expectations from Government of South Sudan have on CNPC and will surely boost the CNPC and the other partners' confidence to make a long-term investment in South Sudan. South Sudan, as we all know, is the only mature producer in East Africa, and indeed one of the longest producing countries in Africa as well. Much of its countries, vast resources still remain unexplored. We at Oranto are eager to work with our South Sudanese partners on building the local capacity and creating opportunities in sustainable development.
I think when you think about petroleum, it will be one of the bases for collaboration between South Sudan and the private sector. You want to ensure that as a foundation, we have a functioning regulatory and legislative structure. It's been very encouraging to see. We've talked about, um, uh, we've heard from the, the speeches yesterday that this is something that South Sudan is, definitely has at the back, as a, uh, the back of its mind and is starting the process of. So we definitely commend the Republic of South Sudan and say please carry on with that. It is foundational, it is important. The country is endowed with more than just oil as a resource. We have other minerals here, uh, and we've got rich agricultural land that we also need to think about how we're going to expand and how we're going to leverage off that to develop our nations and also export to, uh, to other markets. And that's why the role of supply chain integration becomes so important in whatever we do in South Sudan. Technology. This is one of the things that we all share. Yesterday we heard the engineers talk a lot about the new emerging technologies in the exploration and production of oil. Banks and financial institutions face the same challenge in terms of the development um, of, of technology. For us to be able to provide you with the services um, that you need, it means that we also have to adopt new ways of engaging with you. In South Sudan, we have a famous slogan. People say, oh yeah, when they're happy at something. So I will want to say, Petroleum Conference, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I congratulate our Ministry of Petroleum for this uh, historic and remarkable uh, investment conference. Mobrook, uh, Honorable Minister. As you have seen, and heard in this conference from our giants, the experts here, South Sudan is a very conducive country for all forms, in fact not only oil. And we will continue to market South Sudan worldwide. The potentials of South Sudan is huge. Think big, don't think small.